Hello and welcome to How to Play Old World. In this series of videos I'm going to be going through some of the basics and later the more advanced mechanics of the Old World 4X strategy game to try and cover things that are missed in the game's built-in tutorial. I'm going to try and keep these videos short and concise so I'll be breaking them down into various different aspects of the game and in this first video I'm going to be talking about settling your cities, building workers and expanding your cities both by producing units, improvements to tiles and gaining yields. The first thing that you're going to want to do with any city is to settle it. A city can only be settled on a city site which are represented in game by these uh, structures, these sort of tribal structures, and you will also need a settler. Now your city can be settled on any of the tiles that contain these buildings. If you select the settler you will see those tiles highlighted in green so you know which ones that you can settle on. And if you move the mouse around over the different available tiles you will notice the outline uh, is moving around. This is what your city's borders will be if you build your city on that particular tile. So it's worth trying to keep in mind what special tiles you will have within your borders when that city is founded. If we look at this spot that we have here, we've got four rather important tiles to us. We've got some wheat tiles uh, located to the northwest, the north, the northeast. And we've also got some camels down here to the southeast. If we were to take this tile on the left here for our city, we wouldn't get the camels included in our borders. Uh, most of the other ones will still get the wheat. And in fact, this is the only tile, the one that we're currently standing on, that would include the camels. So we're going to go ahead and settle on the tile that we're on. When you settle a city... You have to choose from one of the four available families here on the left hand side. These families will be different depending on the nation that you're playing and I'm not going to go into detail on this now because characters and families will be something for another video. But essentially each of these families will provide a different set of bonuses and abilities for the city. Every time you settle a new city you can pick from one of these families. Once you've selected three different families, the fourth one is locked out, so you can only have three in any one game. But the point here is, when settling a city, look at the different options available from the families and try and choose the one that you think will give you the most benefit to the city that you're settling. One other important thing is settling near fresh water, particularly rivers. It's not required, but cities that have access to fresh water will be easier to create a trade network, something that I'll cover in another video, and it will also allow the city to grow more quickly. So I'm just going to go and pick any one of the families here. It doesn't really matter for me at this point. And there we go, our city is settled. Once you settle your first city, you'll be asked to choose a technology. We're going to ignore that for now as we have more important things to consider. So once you have your city, you need to start producing yields. There are a number of different resources in Old World, and I'm not going to go through exactly what all of them do, but we'll just talk about them very briefly. So up here at the top of the screen, we have gold, food, iron, stone, lumber, and orders. Now gold obviously is used for purchasing uh, things and you can also sell things for gold. It's also used for unit maintenance. We've then got food, iron, stone and lumber which are all used in the recruitment of units or the construction of buildings and upgrades. And then we have orders. Orders are also shown down here in the bottom left hand corner. And orders are your global pool for the number of actions that you can take within a game which includes moving units and uh, constructing uh, upgrades and various different diplomatic actions. Uh, also to the right of those up the top we have our science which is how quickly you progress through uh, research in the tech tree. We have civics which are usually spent on uh, enacting laws and certain diplomatic actions. We have training which is usually spent on promoting units and also causing them to force march. And then the icon to the right hand side is Luxuries which we'll talk about in another video. There are also two more resources that uh, are not shown along the top here because the, these resources along the top are uh, global, these are the global pools. Uh, but there is also the resource of 
um, culture, which is per city. So if I click on the city and we look down here in the bottom left, you can see our culture. Culture is represented by this little blue sort of Greek style column. Uh, and we're currently gaining plus two culture per turn. Culture indicates how quickly the city is going to grow and develop. Cities with a higher culture will allow you to construct a wider variety of buildings and units and a wider variety of tile upgrades. And we also have our growth. Uh, growth is represented uh, in two places, actually here. You can see our number of citizens. So uh, the growth is the little sort of green colored human head. And we're currently gaining 10 per turn. Growth affects the number of uh, citizens you have in a city. Our capital here starts with one citizen, which can be seen by this number in the little green box below the city's uh, nameplate. And if we were to close out of the city, we can again see it here beneath the city. Population, the number of citizens, is important later when we start talking about specialists. So if this is your first city, uh, you will probably start with a number of units, including a worker. It might be a good idea to get yourself a second worker as soon as possible. And your first city will nearly always start by being partway through training another settler, so you're well on your way to getting your second city. If it is your second city or any subsequent city thereafter, the first thing you probably want to do is get yourself a worker by clicking on the city and clicking the worker button up here in the left-hand corner. Now, everything that you can build within a city will appear on the left-hand side. Anything at the top is considered a civilian unit even the scouts and even the militia these are civilians civilian units require food at least some of them do the settler requires a hundred food to produce and also requires two food every turn as maintenance uh, you don't require a straight up investment of food to produce the militia the scout or the worker but the worker does consume two food per turn as uh, maintenance and the militia consumes one food per turn as maintenance. Now you will notice that all four of these units currently appear under the growth heading. That's because the city's growth will affect how quickly these units are built. The more growth the city has, the faster these units will produce. Now while you're producing one of these units, all of the growth goes into the unit's production and the city will not grow. You will gain no progress towards an additional citizen if you are training one of the units up here. That's why it's currently showing that our growth is plus 10, but if we go and look at the citizens, you can see that it says plus zero. That is because the plus 10 growth that we are currently gaining is going into the settler that we're producing because the settler requires growth. Below them, we have what will mostly be our military units. Military units require training. So any training that the city is producing will go into the unit rather than the global pool. Now if you look up here at our training, you can see that we are gaining plus 10 training from uh, Carthago, which is our main city, and we're also gaining plus 10 from the Just. So we're getting plus 10 from one of our characters. Again, we're going to talk about characters in another video. But this city, our main city, is producing 10 training. That's why it says plus 10 there. So by producing a slinger, or an African elephant here if we could, uh, then we would be get, having 10 go into the global pool from the just, and the 10 from Carthago would be going into trading the unit. And then finally below that we have our civics projects. Uh, these are things that can be uh, done in the city which will give you a bonus to something it might increase your population and it might decrease your uh, unhappiness like in this one uh, also giving you additional um, culture uh, this one here increases our civics and training and monetary yields these all cost civics to enact so how do we get these different resources well we get these different resources by improving tiles you only gain resources from tiles that are improved. If we select our worker, you will see that we have a number of options on the left-hand side. These are all things that our workers can build. We have farms, mines, quarries, 
lumber mills, strongholds, all kinds of things. As you improve the culture level of each city, and as you unlock new technologies, the options for your workers will grow. The ones that you're going to be building more than anything are farms, mines and quarries, and then eventually once you get the technology, lumber mill. You'll see some of these options are already greyed out, and if I mouse over them, it will say, as for example with the quarry, it requires stone cutting, which is a technology. The lumber mill requires forestry, which is another technology. It also says it requires trees, and that's because our worker isn't currently standing on a tile with trees on it, though there is one down here. You'll also notice on the main game screen that there are several icons that are appearing above some of the tiles. And if we mouse over them, we can see what they are. This one is saying the Shrine of Tanit. This one is saying a farm. This one is saying a mine. And this one is saying a camp. This is the game's uh, AI giving you recommendations as what you want to build and where. Basically, a farm will produce food. A mine will produce iron. And a quarry will produce stone. There are certain benefits to putting them in different places. For example, a farm built next to a river will produce more food than one that isn't. And a quarry built at the base of a mountain will produce more stone than one that isn't. Uh, you can also get trees by building a lumber mill on a, a forest tile or a wooded tile. But before you can get lumber mills, because you have to uh, research the forestry tech, what you can do is move a worker onto a tile that has trees on it and you will have the option down here under actions to cut trees. It consumes an order and clicking that once will cut the trees down. So for the cost of one order we gain 20 wood. Now this tile is now cut trees and it will grow back in time. We have the option here as well to clear land. If we click this button it will cost us another order we will get some more lumber by doing it, but at this point, the trees will be gone and they will not grow back. It is worth noting that you can build other upgrades on top of a tree tile, such as a farm or a mine or a quarry, and doing so will automatically cut the trees, clear the land, and start work on the upgrade that you've chosen. So it will cost you three orders rather than one. Likewise, if you want to build an improvement on a tile, all you need to do is move your worker over to that tile and select the improvement from the list up on the left-hand side. So we could build a mine up here by clicking on the mine. The numbers to the right-hand side indicate the amount and type of resources needed to build this improvement. So farms and mines require 20 lumber, the quarry uh, and lumber mill require 20 iron, the shrines all require 60 stone. You'll also see down here at the bottom we have the Oracle, which is a wonder. Wonders are unique. And you can see that this wonder actually requires 100 civics, 200 food, and 400 stone. It will also use one order per year. So a year in this game represents a turn, and it'll use one order per turn. You can see, although it might be difficult on the screen, there's a little number at the bottom of each icon for the different, up, uh, different improvements that shows how many years or how many turns it will take the worker to build them. And that will vary depending on the type of tile that they are standing on. The little star is the recommendation, so that will tell you which one the AI thinks that you should be building. There are also certain things that are worth improving, such as if you build a camp on camels, that would give us additional training. If we were to build a farm on top of um, the wheat, that would give us additional yields. So I can see by mousing over the farm icon on the wheat uh, that it will give me plus two population per turn and plus 12 food. In fact, uh, the top wheat tile offers me the same. Uh, the wheat tile to the northeast only offers plus 10 food. That's because it isn't next to a river. The other two are. Uh, and you can also see that there are various um, non-wheat tiles that offer either six food or five food if we were to build a mine on them. So the six food ones, again, are next to rivers. The five food ones are not. But because they don't have wheat, they don't get that big bonus to food and they don't get the bonus to population. So it's always worth, when settling your city, to try and get yourself as many of the resources within your borders as possible. Now, when you want to construct something, 
you may find that you don't have all of the resources to build it. Like here, for example, I have the food to build the oracle, but I do not have the stone. You always have access to the global market. You can buy and sell food, stone, iron and lumber. If you go down to the sell button, you can click for single units, you can hold shift for multiples of 10, or you can hold control to sell multiples of 100. We don't have any gold at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sell a little bit of our wood, and I'm going to quickly sell a little bit of our iron, and I think I'll just sell a little bit of the wood as well, just to demonstrate something. So, I currently have 500 gold now in the bank. So, let's say that we wanted to build the oracle. The oracle requires 100 civics, which we have. We have 900. The oracle requires 200 food, which we have. We have 300. And it requires 400 stone, which we don't have. Now, I could go and buy the stone. We already have 300. We're 100 short. So, I could just go and buy 100 stone for 402 gold. Or 402.8 gold. We have enough because we have 500 gold now. Or the other option we could do is we can hold down the Alt key. And that will automatically, if I then click on the Oracle, you can see holding down the Alt key highlights the Oracle here on the left hand side. And it mentions this um, under the bottom of the little pop out there. Hold Alt to buy one. So by holding down Alt and then clicking this button, that will automatically... Uh, deduct the gold and purchase the stone needed to complete the production. There are also various improvements that benefit from being next to others. For example, uh, a garrison will benefit from being next to a barracks. A granary is beneficial if it is next to a farm. There are various other combinations as well. Earlier on in the video, I, when I was talking about population, I mentioned specialists. Once you have some population and you've built a few improvements in one of your cities, if you click on the city, you will have an additional list on the left-hand side under civics that says specialists. Essentially, a specialist can be put into any one of your improved tiles and they will increase the yield for that tile and they will also act as what is called a culture bomb. Now, you may notice that certain specialists have multiple options. For example, a stone cutter who is a specialist that goes into a quarry, if I click this button out on the right hand side, you will see it gives me a list of different stone cutters. That's because each one of these is for a different quarry. If you look as I move down the list, you can see the highlighted tile moving around my city. That's for all of the different quarries. Now, one thing that is important with specialists is not only do they improve the yields of a tile, but they also act as a culture bomb. For example, if we're looking at this tile right here, this is a quarry tile. If I were to put a specialist in this tile, you can see that there's a little pop-up appearing showing all of the extra border growth I would get for putting a specialist in that tile. This is one of the ways in which you grow your borders within Old World, by putting specialists into tiles. So whichever one of these we pick, we will grab some additional tiles. There are other ways to do this, which I will talk about in a moment. But you need population to produce a specialist. Once you have created a specialist, your population will decrease by one, uh, which is the green number, and the orange number will increase by one. That's the number of specialists you have. And again, you can see that in the city uh, by looking at the numbers underneath the city banner. You start off with your uh, total citizens, then your specialists, and then your level, which is essentially your culture. So I have six citizens total here to spare, so I could produce six more uh, specialists. Um, you cannot move a specialist once it has been uh, trained and put into a tile. That's because a specialist gives you the culture bomb, so you can't move them around like you can do in something like Civilization. So think carefully about which tile you're going to put the specialist in, but do use them tactically for grabbing additional territory, particularly if you're close to an enemy. Now, there are two different types of, uh, two main different types of tile that you can build on within Old World. You've got your urban tiles, which are any tiles that look like these ones that have little buildings in them. And then everything else is classed as a rural tile. 
Some things like mines, quarries, farms are built on rural tiles. And then there are other buildings like uh, barrackses and... Um, for, uh, not fort, sorry, barrackses and garrisons that are built on the urban tiles. There are some constructions that can be built next to, to um, urban tiles if they require an urban tile, but you can't build directly on top of one. You can build adjacent to two, and that will turn that tile into an urban tile and help your urban tiles spread. There are also some other improvements that you can build, such as a hamlet, a hamlet can be built on a rural tile and that will also act as a culture bomb and will grab the surrounding tiles from it and that will eventually become an urban tile as well. So those are the ways that you can produce extra units, improve your tiles and grow your city borders. In a future video I'll be talking a little bit more about the characters within the game and how governors and families and the leaders of those families can improve the yields of your cities. So thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you on the next video and until then, goodbye for now.